Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart and welcome to a quick overview video of Tylus, a new faction in the DLC released by Total War Rome 2 and Creative Assembly. So, like the other Balkan tribes, they have Promise of Loot and they have Rapid Campaigns, minus 50% mercenary cost, recruitment cost and plus 50% mercenary upkeep cost. Um, they have Live by the Sword, which is plus one experience for infantry recruits. They have Thracian Oppression, which is public order penalty of maximum of minus four from the presence of Balkan culture so because these are Thracian you don't want to be having the Balkan culture in your in your settlement because it won't be good for you and they are plunderers so they have plus 150% from raiding so they have 150% the Adrissians have 100% and the RDI have 200% so not too much difference there really it's more or less copy and paste in my opinion but anyway as to see you all on the campaign map Okay, so this is Tylus now. Like the other three factions, they have a reward of 2,500 by completely controlling two provinces, either by direct ownership or through military allies. So, first things first, we'll click on the icon for the faction here. They are barbarian culture, their capital is Anthea, and their prosperity is destitute. They own the one region, and they start off with a treasury of 3,000, just like the Odrysian kingdom. They're Balkan tribes, and they're Tylus. These are the stats they have on the faction selection screen which you can see here elder chiefs are in charge they have 65 percent gravitas other chiefs have 35 percent and they have two generals here merios and canarios diplomacy is your at war with maston straight off the bat you have one spy out of one you don't have any dignitaries or champions you have one army out of two and you have one fleet out of one that's how they start so first things first we have a spy or a scout we're going to want to move him towards Pulpadeva. That's exactly what we're going to do. Move our spy there. That would be wise. We're also going to quickly stick on supply foraging. We're going to go on diplomacy. We're going to see who hates us, who doesn't. So Maston hates us, obviously. They're at war with us on the first turn. Athens dislike us because of our war. Well, because of our culture and because of our, our trespasses against Athens. Bithynia don't like us either. Just to the south of us. The Getai don't like us that much as well. So straight away you could have two or three factions at war with you. You have Macedon already. You could have Athens down here, Bithynia down here, and Getai up here. All around you, all at war with you in the first few turns. So that could be something of a concern for you as a player. The Cateroi are pretty okay with us at the moment. They're all the way up here, so they're not really um, a target to worry about at the moment. Cymeria as well, they're in the Bosporus region they're just quite neutral might be able to get trade or something with them with a the non-aggression pack first Galatia down here they are the same blood as you so because they're barbarian you're barbarian you might be able to get a same blood pact with them and maybe start a confederacy later in a campaign but you can't trade with them because there's no sea route available the Odrysian kingdom are neutral I think probably a good idea would be to get on the Odrysian, Odrysian kingdom's good side and then go to Maston on with them on your side you have Pergamon down here as well. I'd love Pergamon to be available. I think they're a pretty cool faction, pretty unique. Uh, Pontus, of course, which is over here. They're not really a, a worry at the moment. They're all the way over there. And Royal Cynthia, which is the furthest one away up here in the north in Ponto Caspia. So in Anthea, we can expand straight away, which we will do. And we can build a quarry, an artisan's lodgings, sacred enclosure, or an enclosed land. So we can do plenty of stuff there. We can upgrade our port to a harbour or a fisherman's hut and we can upgrade our barbarian hamlet to a barbarian village. Now straight away we got minus 10% public order. If you have a quick look at the public order that's because of the cultural differences and this is what I was going on about at the start screen of this campaign. Basically because of our culture we suffer this this um, public order defect. So that's some, one thing you're probably going to want to build straight off is probably a sacred enclosure to give a plus 2 maybe garrison a few units and I do believe let's see yes we can have two armies so probably what you want to do is probably get a general raise an army of some sort I'm just going to do this quickly just to show you guys get a general recruit some units and have a look at the recruits right now so they have Thracian warriors Levy Freeman and Celtic slingers so they've got more of a barbarian feel as opposed to the Odrysian Adris kingdom which has a more Thracian feel so it depends what your preferences are they're more or less the same the same region where they start they're only next door to each other really so it's not really much of a difference 
Uh, this army has some um, Thracian Slingers, Light Horse, I love Light Horse, they're a brilliant unit to use in this game. Levy Freeman, Thracian Warriors and a General of course, and of course we can recruit the same things. And then Mercenaries, we can have some Mercenary Thracian Cavalry, we can have Merc Mercenary Thracian Warriors, Mercenary Thracian Peltas, and unique to this faction are Mercenary Dacian Bowmen. Plenty of stuff there. Our Navy of course yes. has two Pursuit Trihemiolias, tri which are Celtic, and then our Admiral of course. We can have a Missile Raider, which is a Celtic Missile Raider. Ra uh, Missile Raider, sorry, and Missile Triers, which are mercenary Persian archers, basically. And recruitment is a Celtic Tribesman Assault Raider. So, what we're going to do, just like all the other videos, we're going to click end turn and we're going to see what happens in the opening turn to see if any AI factions declare war on me in the opening turn without me again personally involved declaring war on them I want to see if they attack me first I'm hoping Mastodon will come and attack me but they haven't because their turn's already gone let's see there we go so nobody attacked me but disappointing really but Mastodon's there for the take in so in this campaign if I go into the strategic overview quickly I'd be looking to take Mastodon out first take Pulpadiva, take Pella, go across, take these lands if Mastodon doesn't own them, maybe get all of Macedonia, and then go perhaps go for the Odrysian Kingdom. Go for all of Macedonia, then go for all of Thracia. Then it's up to you as a player. Do you want to go south to Hellas, go across to Asia and Bithynia, go north to Dacia, or go across to Valyria and Italy? It's totally up to the player. You go in all four directions, but, but that's how I would probably play it if I was playing as this faction in a main campaign. But anyway, I'm going to end the video there. Hope you enjoyed this video, hope it's helped you out a little bit. I've been Dragonheart, until next time, goodbye.